Hey, greetings everyone. I want us to look for a brief moment on Romans chapter 12. Now, in Romans chapter 12 to 16, Paul wrote this letter to the, to the Romans, teaching them or telling them how they ought to behave. And so, moving from the theological to the practical, Paul gives guidelines for living as a redeemed people in a fallen world. We are to give ourselves to Christ as living sacrifices, obey the government, love our neighbors, and take special care of those who are weak in the faith. He closes with personal remarks. Throughout the section, we learn how to live our faith each day and so in verse in chapter 12 of romans paul speaks to the personal responsibility of the the child of god and he in chapter 12 he admonishes us in the first few verses to present ourselves as living sacrifice and so in verse 1 and 2 he says therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer on the King James Version say to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God and he says this is your true and proper worship and the King James Version says your reasonable service and then in verse 2 he says do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so, when sacrificing an animal according to God's law, a priest would kill the animal, cut it into pieces, and place it on the altar. Sacrifice was important, but even in the Old Testament, God made it clear, made it clear from the, that obedience from the heart was more important. And then God wants us to offer ourselves, not animals, as living sacrifices, daily laying aside our own desires to follow him, putting all our energy and resources at his, pers at his disposal, and trusting him to guide us we do this out of gratitude that our sins have been forgiven all right so as paul encourages us here to um he's and he says i urge you i am begging you right he says brothers and sisters say in view of god's mercies in view of what god has been doing for us in view of who he is to us to do what to present ourselves as a living sacrifice to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice holy he says and pleasing to god because he says this is your reasonable service as your proper proper worship your true and proper worship all right and then he he goes on to say um don't conform to the patterns of this world not follow what we see happening in this world but he says but he says be transformed by the renewing of your mind and so we have to try to be renewing our minds each day and don't be conformed to what we see happening around us don't don't go with the flow right and as children of god our thoughts have to be different the way our attitude to what's happening around us have to be different right because we know we trust we trust in a a, a mighty god we trust in, a, in the true and living God who is able to do any and everything. And so it's important that our attitude to what is happening around us um, is different from the way those who, who do not know Christ behave. Right? And so we can't be, we can't be going around complaining, complaining every day about everything. Right? Our attitude should be an attitude of trust and an attitude of faith in God all right and so it's important for us to to build our faith in God and trust him every day 
to see us through and to guide us. Now, in, in, in verse 3, he said, Paul, the topic there says, humble service in the body of Christ. So, Paul says, for by grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. And he goes on to say in verse 4, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the others. And it says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully and so i want to encourage us to we need to discover our gifts we need to discover what it is that god has called us to do what it is that as me, as a member of the body of christ our gift is so we need to discover discover our gifting and use them as we are um, being encouraged here so if your gift is to is to encourage then give encouragement all right and some persons don't realize that being an, an encourager is a gift, right? It's a gift and we ought to use it to the glory of God, right? If your gift is, is, is the, um, giving, then give, the, as Paul says here, he says give generously, right? Without complaining or murmuring. And if it is to serve, then he says serve, right? Give excellent service. And these are some other things that some persons don't, they don't realize that so a lot of the things that we do as children of God, they are giftings from God. And we ought to see them that way, right? As giftings from the Lord. And when it, in just to go in verse 3 where um, Paul says, By the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, he says, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but you must think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God had distributed to each of us, right? And so, you see, the truth is that sometimes because of what our giftings may be, we believe that my gift is more important than your gift and what I do is more important than, more important than what you do. But then we shouldn't think of ourselves in those terms as who is more important than each other, right? Because what we are doing is complementing each other, right? And so we know what the, the body, how the body works and how the body functions. Um, we know that the body is not, is not just an eye or an ear or a nose or a, a mouth and so on, right? So every part of the body um, complement each other and each part needs the other. And so it's important that we don't um, glorify one gift over another or glorify what one person does over what another person person does because it does happen in the church that because of what i do i think that i'm more important or i feel more important than than others because of what they do but the person who cleans the church is, is um, extremely important right the person who greets is important Right? The person who um, ensure that visitors and pastors and the persons are refreshed, they are very important. So, so each um, member of the church, each member of the body of Christ is um, very important to the functioning of, to the proper functioning of the body of Christ. Right? And so we shouldn't look down on each, on each other or anybody's function in the body of Christ or the gifting. And so it is important for us to discover and use our gift to the glory of God. 
And so Paul continues to say, uh, no, just, just a sec. So God gives us gifts so that we can do what? We can build up his church. To use them effectively, we must what? We must one, realize that all gifts and abilities come from God. Right? Secondly, we must understand that not everyone has the same gifts. Then thirdly, we must know know who we are and what we do best. Right? And this is something that we have to we have to look at them and we have to develop. Know who we are, know what we do, know what we do best. Alright? Number four, we must dedicate our gifts to God's service and do not and not to our personal success. Number five, be willing to utilize our gifts wholeheartedly, not holding back anything from God's service. All right? Now, God's gifts differ in nature, power, and effectiveness according to His wisdom and graciousness, not according to our faith. Our role is to be faithful and to seek ways to serve others with what Christ has given unto us. Alright? So please um, refresh yourselves with these um, six points. We must realize that our gifts and ability, abilities come from God. Two, we must understand that not everyone has the same gift. Three, know who we are and what we do best. Four, dedicate our gifts to God's service and not our personal success. And five, be willing to utilize our gifts wholeheartedly, not holding back anything from God's service. And we must remember that God's gifts differ in nature, in power and effectiveness according to his wisdom and graciousness, not according to our faith. And then our role is to be faithful, to seek ways to serve others with what? Christ has given to us and he continues in verse 9 and here we see love in action it says love must be sincere love must be sincere hate what is evil cling to what is good be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourselves never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor, right? Serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in afflic afflic affliction, the King James Version says in um, tribulation. Faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. And in verse 17, it says, Do not pay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. And verse 18 says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good and you know sometimes persons may hurt us and we we hold a grudge we hold them up in our hearts we carry them in our hearts and sometimes the persons who we are carrying in our hearts they have long gone past what the situation was but whenever we see them whenever we see them we are burning up inside and we are stressing ourselves out and then we must remember what the, what the word of god says if you have if you are the altar um 
pray, give no sacrifice, you must, and if you, you have ought against your brother, you must leave your gift at the altar and go and make it up with your brother. Right? And so we we can't say that we are saved and we we come into the, the house of God even and we are not talking to each other, we're not we're not um communing as brothers and sisters because of maybe something that um that have taken that took place um in the past. We have to let the past go and we have to move ahead, right? By the power of the Holy Spirit, we ha we have to forgive, right? And we have to be as Christians, we have to practice forgiveness. We have to have a forgiving spirit. You see, we can't just we can't be carrying persons in our heart and expect that we are going to be victorious in our Christian walk with the Lord. And we we will not be able to be true witnesses. Right now, what, what would you be telling others who, who are not saved and they 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 have they are carrying malice or having grudge with someone? You see, so we have to ensure that as children of God, we are different, we have to be we have to operate differently with each other in the body of Christ. And those who are without the body of Christ as well. We have to show them love. Right? And as the the the, the the scripture says here in verse 20, well, back up to verse 19, it says, Do not take revenge, right, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Now, God will take care of it. Let's pray about the situation. Because it is written, it, um, it is mine to avenge, right? It says, Vengeance is mine, save the Lord. I will repay, right? And he says, Now, on the contrary, what should we do? If our enemy is hungry, we should feed him. So even if um, I remember um, somebody borrowed some money from me and promised to pay me back long ago, and when I saw the person, the person not saying anything about the, the money, and at a point I asked the person about the money, and the person said, told me that, well, you don't have any responsibility. At that time, I didn't have any children. And the person said, well, you don't have any responsibility, so you don't need the money. Right? And so I, I just dropped it and left it. And but I prolonged any argument with the person. And just leave it at that. And um, I didn't hold the grudge against the person for it. You see? And you see, sometimes we... As Christians, we, we hold grudge. People person have things around that are not repaying us, and so on. And we don't even want to see the person. Right? Or whenever we see the person, um, we we feel angry. Right? Right. But it shouldn't be that way. And so, in, in closing, these verses from verse 17 to verse 21, says, these verses summarize the core of Christian living. If we love someone the way Christ loves us, we will be willing to forgive. Right? Now, if we have experienced God's grace, we will want to pass it on to others. And we see, I think we have a song like that, um, pass it on to everyone, and so on. I don't remember the words of it now. It says, and remember, grace is undeserved favor. By giving an enemy a drink, we are excusing, we are not excusing his misdeeds. We are recognizing him, forgiving him, and loving him in spite of his sins, just as Christ did for us. Because we do a lot of things that to hurt Christ, but he still loves us. He doesn't, he doesn't shun us. He doesn't turn his back upon us. He still loves us unconditionally. All right? And... In this day of constant lawsuit and incessant demand for legal rights, Paul's command sounds almost impossible. When someone hurts us, hurts you, hurts you deeply, instead of giving him what he deserves, Paul says to befriend him. Right? It's not easy. Paul says we are to befriend him. Why does Paul tell us to forgive our enemies? One, forgiveness may break a cycle of retaliation 
and lead to mutual reconciliation. Right now, secondly, it may make the enemy feel ashamed and change his or her ways. Thirdly, by contrast, repaying evil for evil hurts you just as much as it hurts the enemy. Even if your enemy never repents, forgiving him or her will free you of a heavenly load of bitterness. Right? So remember that. Forgiveness involves both attitudes and action. If you find it difficult to feel find it difficult to feel forgiving towards someone who hurts you, try responding with kind actions. If appropriate, tell the person that you would like to heal your relationship. Lend a helping hand, send him or her a gift, smile at him or her. Many times, many times, you will discover that right actions lead to right feelings. And finally, what does it mean to you to heat burning coals on someone's head? In um, verse 20. This may refer to an Egyptian tradition of carrying a pan of burning charcoal on one's head as a public act of repentance. Eh? By referring to this proverb, Paul was saying that we should treat our enemies with kindness so that they will become ashamed and turn from their sins. The best way to get rid of enemies is to turn them into friends. Alright? So, and we concluded that. So that's Romans chapter 12. And this is just some practical way that as Christians, shows us some practical way that as Christians, we should live and act towards each other. Whether they are our friends or our enemies. Alright? We have to act in a way that's different because how are we going to win these persons for Christ? Especially if, if they are not saved. How are we going to win them for Christ if we malice them? Right? If we don't forgive them. If we don't show them love. Right? It's important. Right? So God bless you as we close. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, God, for your mercy which are new every single morning. We thank you, oh God, for your undeserved favor. For thank you for grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for forgiving our sins, God. And so, because you have forgiven us of our sins, Lord, I pray, God, that you will help us to learn to forgive others. Oh God, to be forgiving towards others who might have hurt us, Lord, in different ways. Heavenly Father, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will give us a heart of compassion. Give us, Lord, hearts that are forgiving of others. Lord, and as your word um, tells us that we should love our enemies. If they, if they, if they are thirsty, we should, we should give them a drink. If they are hungry, we should feed them because this may change their hearts. It may change their minds. It may change their outlook on life. And so, Lord, I pray that as the, um, the body of Christ, you will help us, Lord, to operate as one. Help us, Lord, not to look down on anyone. But, God, help us, Lord, to work together to accomplish, oh God, your will here on earth for our lives. And help, God, that our giftings, oh God, will be manifested in the church, will be manifested, Lord, in the body of Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray. Oh God, that your Holy Spirit will minister to our hearts. Minister, God, to each soul in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you will help us, Lord, to be firm, rooted firm and deep, to be grounded in you, Christ. Oh God, help us, Lord. Forgive us where we have failed you. Forgive us, Heavenly Father. Oh God, for, for carrying grudge, for carrying around people in our hearts, Lord. Oh God, I pray that you will help us, Lord, to unburden ourselves by forgiving Oh God, those who have hurt us in the past, Lord. Oh God, because the forgiveness is not just for, for those who we are forgiving, but the forgiveness, Lord, oh God, is for us as well. So I pray, God, that you help us, Lord, to be forgiving. God, just continue to be with us. Continue, Lord, to overshadow us with your love and your, 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 your Holy Spirit. We give you glory, give you honor, and we give you praise. Thank you for your words. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you richly until we meet again. Amen. Take care of yourselves.